The human memory size can hold the equivalent of 2.5 million gigabytes of data. To put that in perspective, the iPhone 14 comes with a base storage of 128 gigabytes, meaning that the human brain can hold the amount of data that is the equivalent of what nearly 20,000 iPhones could hold. In this video, we will talk about neuroscience and its application to chess. So what is neuroscience? Neuroscience is this fascinating multidisciplinary field involving the study of the human brain and nervous system. Our brain is made up of some 86 billion cells that are called neurons. When we learn new information, important changes happen in our brain, and this includes the creation of new connections between neurons. The word for this is neuroplasticity. The more we practice something, the stronger these connections become. This is how we become better chess players or better at anything else. In this video, I will recommend two concepts within the field of neuroscience that will help make us better chess tacticians and thereby better chess players. But first, let's look at this puzzle. Pause the video if you want to try and solve it. Okay, this puzzle contains an important and practical technique involving two rooks. If you've never seen this tactic before, this could be a time-consuming puzzle. But if you have seen it before and remembered it, then this puzzle becomes quite easy. The first aspect of this puzzle that you might notice is that black does have a threat. Rook takes f1 check, winning the bishop. You might also notice that the bishop is pinned by the h1 rook, but a pinned piece is not prevented from exerting influence on the squares it covers. The f1 bishop may not be able to move anywhere, but the black king cannot legally move onto the squares that the bishop covers. We can see that the black king has access to squares on the a and b files. If only we had the f5 rook safely covering the b file, we could simply play rook a1 checkmate. But there is a technique we can use to achieve such a position. We can play the move rook a5 check, and the black king has to move onto the b file. It doesn't matter which square he chooses for the purposes of this tactic. King b7, and now thanks to the f1 bishop controlling the b5 square, we can place our rook onto b5 without the black king being able to capture it. Rook b5 check. Now the black king has to move on to the a file. King a6. And I'm sure you can see it now. Rook a1 checkmate. So how can we remember tactics like this for the future? The first recommendation that neuroscience has to offer is to repeatedly activate your neurons. It's crucial to understand that the connections between neurons need to be activated multiple times in order to become stronger. In other words, study more often. The second recommendation is to space the activation of neurons. In other words, there should be breaks in sleep between learning periods. The larger picture behind this recommendation is simple. Practice more often, but for shorter periods of time. Let me put forth a more concrete example. If you have, say, 60 minutes to study chess tactics, it is much more efficient to spend, say, 20 minutes in three sessions or 15 minutes in four sessions, etc. But it is important to understand that for the neurons to really be activated, you need to study in an engaging way. Don't just go straight for the puzzle solution. So, next time you have five minutes or less to study chess tactics, don't think that that's not a lot of time or that it's not worth studying for such a short period of time. I hope you found the ideas in this video useful to you. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. See you in the next video.